Fure, fure, it's a beautiful fure. Ah. It's a beautiful It's a beautiful This thing, to ignore that thing, ah, okay. Hello. Ah, okay, can you hear me? Hello. Oh, my mic is on mute. Hello. Hello. Okay, good. The mic is working. Okay, hello everyone. Now it's rain nine or two. I am two minutes late to your class, so. Gonna get on to the lesson, so don't bother me. So I'm just gonna start on the first thing. A little bit of maths, huh? Don't forget, uh, your class N and I forty forty because I didn't upgrade yet. Um, uh, so I uh, need got forty minutes. So let's. Boring. Wait, wait, wait! I share my screen first, ah. Uh. Okay. Let me just uh wait a minute ah uh, wait a minute ah uh, okay. Wait 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 wait. Okay. Share my screen. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm just testing only. Hello, everyone. I don't know. That was just a test to see if my screen was working or was I lagging or not. Checking only to be safe. Then sorry. Wait, 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 I'm gonna do this. Okay. So today, countable and uncountable nouns. Nouns that we can count are. Huh? Countable. Water, no. One book? Yes. Two book? Three book? One pen? Two pens? Three pens? Nouns that we cannot count? Are uncountable. Water, milk, sugar. Okay? Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Next. Put the nouns in the right column. Countable, uncountable. So egg, uh, you can count. Cheese, you can count. Go can, pencil can, butter can. One butter, two butter, jacket can. Oil cannot. Salt cannot. Juice cannot. School. Me, cat.
Oke. Okay. Sam. Eh. Sam and any. I used to state the quantity, amount of something. Some or any, yeah. I use when the exact number is not known. The exact number is not important. Some is used in positive sentence. There are some apples on the table. It's countable. There is some water in the glass that is uncountable. Any is used in questions and negative sentences. Are there any apples in, in the fridge uh, basket? Is there any milk in the fridge? Is any, okay. There aren't any apples in the basket. There isn't any milk in the, bas uh, in the fridge. Some or any. But I don't, eh? I have apples, but I don't have bananas. Mary didn't buy flowers. Don't buy pastas we have got in the cupboard. I can see a house and trees. Water in, there isn't water in the bottle. I can't find books about dinosaurs. Are there orange in the fridge? There are pictures on the wall. Now, check your answers. Some or any. I have some apples, but I don't have any banana. Okay, what is this? Goodbye. Okay. Now I'm going to show the next one. So about con con uh uh what is that called um uh, how to pronounce it uh conjunctions that I am doing today I'm gonna do just uh, con conjunctions. Oi. Okay, good. Where I rename myself. Okay. Next. Conjunctions. Okay, why can't I move? List of conjunctions. The main job of conjunction is to link together different parts of sentence. Coordinating conjunctions, subordinating conjunctions, correctly Correlative conjunctions. Coordinating conjunctions. They make things go together. They can join together. Words, phrases, and indep independent clauses. There are seven coordinating conjunction fanboys. I don't know what is that. For Explain reason or purpose just like because I go to the lake, the park every Sunday for I, for I love to watch the duck on the lake. So, as they say, for is just like because. So, if I worry, I go to the park every Sunday because I love to watch the duck on the lake. So, it does make sense. At 
on thing to another. I go to the park every Sunday to watch the duck on the lake and feed them. No, used to present an out alternative negative idea to an already stated negative idea. I don't go for the fresh air nor really for the ducks. Honestly, I just like soccer. If a coordinating conjunction is joining together two independent clauses, things that could feasibly stand alone as complete sentence, it needs to have a comma with it. If the conjunction is connecting two phrases in complete sentences or words as in a list, it does not need a comma. Subordinating conjunctions. A subordinating conjunction always introduce a de dependent clause, trying to it it to get a trying it to an independent clauses. The clauses can go in any order that is the inde independent or the dependent clause can come first in the sentence but in either order the first word of the dependent or subordinating clause will be the subordinating su subordinating conjunction using subordinating conjunctions after your heart will break like mine and you want only me after you've gone. Although I've been here before, I couldn't recall the street name. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I take a look at my life and realize there is nothing left. I don't care who you are, where you're from, or what did you, what did you do, what did you do. What did, what you did as long as you love me. I'm working because I need money. And because it's used for a reason. Okay, I'll just put R. Oh. Before. Just touch my cheek before you leave me. I'm not going to read the last one. Even if the sky is falling down, you'll be my only. If you leave me now, you take away the biggest part of me. Oh my god, this is all about love. Once you pop, you can't stop. Pringles commercial. What is all this? Now that I found you, I won't let you go. I guess I'll never be the same since I fell for you. Oh my god. There's coming next week. Though, I don't know which day. We're never gonna survive. Unless we find some food, you don't know what you've got until it's gone. I don't know what the Cinderella means. When I see you smile, I can for I can forget my problems. I was reading while my dog it it was eating his dinner. This is not about love. Okay, finally, this last one is not about love. The whole thing, ah. Huh? From here to here is all love, you know. I don't know why they put it. Correctly, correlative conjunctions. They come in pairs and you have to use both of the difference them in different places in a sentence to make them work. Correlative conjunction includes pairs like both and whether or either or neither nor not but and not only but also not only i like both english and chinese whether or not i still like english ah whether or not whether is a uh, uh, whether is in the front or whether or either you pick this or you pick this neither neither you pick this nor you pick this not uh, let me think of an example 
this is not your thing, but this is that person thing. Not only you cheat on me, but also you took my best friend away from me. <laughs> I can only think of it. I want either the cheesecake or the frozen hot chocolate. I'll have both the cheesecake and the frozen hot chocolate. I didn't know whether you'd want the cheesecake or the frozen hot chocolate, so I got you both. <laughs> or you want neither the cheesecake nor the frozen hot chocolate. No problem, I'll eat them both, not only the cheesecake but also the frozen hot chocolate. I see you're in the mood not for desserts but appetizers. I'll help you I'll help you with those two. Okay, I'll um this okay then uh this cut. Okay, I'll give you uh about like um uh, how many minutes are uh let me see yeah. I'll give you about a five minute break. Uh, wait, I didn't say go yet. I didn't say go yet. Sit down. Okay. Okay, I'll give you a five minutes. I'll give you a five minute break, so until twenty two, nine twenty two, I wanna see you back here. Nine Go now. Go now.
Time's up. Thôi. Time's up. Ok. I'm gonna share my screen. A conjunction is a joiner, a word that that what that that, that what that what ah. Huh? That connects conjoins part of a sentence and but also because therefore if although even though however in spite of nevertheless still more over which my sister so you see ah we have two people this is one and this is two so when there is two people, my sister and so I'll just write two. So I'll just write two here also. So one, this one three, this one four, one five, one six, one seven, one eight, one six. Okay, I don't know what happened, but I can't read it, the screen. Okay, there, okay. This is six. This is seven. This is eight. And this is nine. Eleven, I have to stop at uh nine twenty five. Yeah, so that I can uh do the video. So this one I think I will sign you as homework. Okay, so uh I will don't I will let you do it tomorrow. Yeah, I was in a bit. I was in a bit rushed today. Why? Because I still have a video for you to watch, so I need to hurry up so that I won't be late. Okay, now I can let you watch the video. Hello, my name is Emma, and today I am going to teach you some very important expressions and vocabulary about the weekend. I love the weekend. When I'm talking about the weekend, I'm talking about Saturday and Sunday. So a lot of the times on Fridays and Mondays, people talk about the weekend. So it's very important to know vocabulary and expressions about the weekend because it's such a common part of conversation. So let's look at some examples of weekend vocabulary. So on Friday, and notice I have on, uh, a lot of students make uh, mistakes with this, but the preposition we use with days of the week is the word on. So on Friday, People often ask this question. Do you have any plans for the weekend? Do you have any plans for the weekend? Um, or they might not ask, do you have? They might just say, any plans for the weekend? It's a very common question people ask on Fridays. And what they want is for you to talk about your plans for the weekend. What are you going to do on Saturday? What are you going to do on Sunday? Now, another thing you might see on Friday is sometimes people say TGIF, or they might write it somewhere. Um, my sister, Audra, who's going to help us in a little bit, and I often text each other this, TGIF. Every Friday we write each other this. What does it mean? It means thank goodness or thank God 
it's Friday. We say this because we are so happy it's Friday. No more work, it's the weekend, we can relax. So TGIF. Another expression we might talk about on a Friday is the word long weekend. A long weekend is a weekend that is three days. So it might be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday where you have it off work, or it might be Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So if you have a three-day weekend, we call that a long weekend. Long weekends are my favorite. I love long weekends. So we talk about this on Friday, we do our thing on the weekend, and then on Monday, most people go back to school or work. And this is often one of the first questions you will hear on Monday. You'll hear, so what'd you do this weekend? And notice I have what with an apostrophe and a D. The D here stands for did. So this can also be what did you do this weekend? But in conversation, we often um, use contractions or we shorten words. So what did you do this weekend actually becomes what did you do this weekend? And this is really hard for English language learners um, because, you know, they hear this and they don't realize that what means what did. Okay, so be careful about this. So what did you do this weekend? You might hear somebody ask, how was your weekend? Uh, you might hear this question, did you get up to anything this weekend? The word or the expression get up to is a very common expression and it just means do. Okay, so we use it when we're talking about um, activities we did in the past. So did you get up to anything this weekend means did you do anything this weekend? So they have the same meaning. Did you get up to anything this weekend? Did you do anything this weekend? Um, if you hear somebody ask this question, one thing you can say is you can use get up to in your response. You can say, I didn't get up too much. This means I didn't do anything really. I didn't do a lot, nothing special. So I didn't get up too much this weekend. It's funny with this expression because we only use it in the negative. We do not say, I got up to a lot. We would say, I did a lot, but in terms of when we use get up to, we only use it in the negative form. I didn't get up too much this weekend. So now we are going to look at some common activities we do on the weekend, and we are going to do a listening activity with my sister, Audra. Okay, so there are many things you can do on the weekend. Uh, I'm going to give some examples of some things I like to do during the weekend. Before I begin, I just wanted to say one thing. There is a difference between British English and American English when we're talking about the weekend. In British English, we can say at the weekend. In North American English, we say on the weekend. So both at or on are correct, depending on where you live and where you're speaking English. So let's get started on common plans we talk about, or common plans uh, for the weekend. Now, the first thing I wanted to talk about is brunch. Brunch is very popular in North America and other countries as well. Brunch is a meal. People often have brunch at restaurants. And if you notice, I've put equals breakfast plus lunch. So brunch is between breakfast and lunch. It's usually around 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. And people, especially on Sundays, people often go for brunch. Okay, so you can say, um, on Sunday, I had brunch with my family. On Sunday, I had brunch with some friends. So you'll hear people talk a lot about brunch in North America. Another thing people often do, and I do this a lot during the weekend, is we binge on TV shows. 
So some people have Netflix, some people have Hulu, some people have um, maybe DVDs or um, some show they're watching. When we binge on something, it means we do too much of something. So if you binge on a TV show, it means you watch a lot of episodes of a TV show back to back. So for example, when I was watching Game of Thrones, I binged on Game of Thrones. Sometimes I watched four episodes in a row and my whole Saturday was spent binging on Game of Thrones. <laughs> so this is a common expression you might hear people talk about when they're talking about the weekend. Another thing people often do on the weekend is they run errands. So the past tense of run is ran. So on Saturday, I ran some errands. What does this mean? Well, errands is a big term that covers many different activities. Errands include doing groceries, um, you know, maybe getting a new cell phone charger. It's those little small tasks you have to do. Um, so those are errands. Maybe you have to pay a bill and you have to go somewhere. Instead of saying what each task is, you can just say errands. Okay, so errands is another word for task. What do you have to do on the weekend? I ran some errands. A lot of people meet up with their friends or family. So this means that they see their friends or family. So I can say on Saturday, I met up with some friends. I went to a BBQ or a barbecue. BBQ is the short form of the word barbecue. Um, we often talk about things we get caught up on. So this might be a new expression. Sometimes in life we feel like we're behind. Our week is very busy and so we need to have some time to catch up or to get things done that we didn't have time to get done during the week. So let's look at some examples of things we get caught up on. We can get caught up on schoolwork. So this means during the week, I didn't have time to do some, some schoolwork. Now I have time. So I get caught up on schoolwork. I get caught up on housework. So maybe during the week, I couldn't do my laundry. Now I can, I have time. So I get caught up on housework. Maybe you have a job where you have to do projects during the weekend. You can say, I got caught up on work. For some people during the week, they only get five hours of sleep. So maybe they like to sleep late or take naps on the weekend. So they can say, I got caught up on sleep. Many people like to sleep in on the weekend. This means they do not wake up early, they sleep late. So on Saturday, I like to sleep in. And slept is the past tense of sleep. Finally, some people just say they relaxed on the weekend. So now we are going to do a listening activity. I've taught you many words about the weekend. I'm going to bring my sister on and we're going to talk about her weekend and what she does. Okay, so now we are going to practice what we learned. I'd like to invite my sister, Audra, over here to help us uh, with our conversation. So come on out, Audra. Thank you for being here today. No problem. So Audra, what did you do this weekend? Well, on Saturday, I had a family barbecue and everyone came over. We had burgers and steak and lots and lots of cake. Wow. Did you do anything else on Saturday? I did. I actually went out for coffee with my best friend, Christine, and we did a bit of shopping and it was really, really lovely. Great. And what about on Sunday? What did you get up to on Sunday? So on Sunday, I did something a bit exciting. I went to a sewing class and I made a fabric basket. A fa fabric basket. Okay. So Audra is going to show us her creation. Let's see what Audra made. Ta-da! <laughs> Not only is she beautiful, but she is very talented. Thank you. 
Did you do anything else on Sunday? Uh, I think that was about it for, for Sunday. I do have some errands to do when I get home. I will be doing laundry. Okay. And what about, what time did you wake up during the weekend? Did you sleep in? I did not sleep in. I woke up around 7.30 in the morning, which is quite early. I wish I could have slept in until 11 a.m. That would have been much better. Do you usually sleep in on weekends? I do not. I get up quite early. I normally wake up at 6 a.m. during the week. On weekends, I could say I sleep in until 7.30 a.m. Ideally, I would like to sleep in until 11 a.m. Wow. So my last question for you, Audra, is about brunch. I know my sister Audra loves brunch. Sometimes we go to brunch together. So when do you usually do brunch? Uh, my friend Lou and I often do brunch on the weekends. On Sunday morning, we go out for brunch and we try different places and we get to try many different types of food. All right. Well, thank you so much, Audra. Thanks for telling us all about your weekend. No problem. Thank you for having me. So thank you for watching. Um, I want to invite you to check out our website at www.ingvid.com. There you can actually do a quiz where you can practice everything you learned today in this video. I'd also like um, to invite you to check out uh, my channel and subscribe to my channel. There you can actually see a lot of other videos on different English uh, topics. Don't forget to ring the bell. Uh, lastly, I'd like to invite you to check out my Patreon page at www.teacheremma.com. So thank you for watching and until next time, take care. The video has ended. Okay, it's 9 40. Um, I'll go through your homework tomorrow. <coughs> tomorrow. And I'll give you today's homework tomorrow. Okay, I'll see you all tomorrow. <coughs>